What's going on guys? Tony here from Roll with the Boys. So today we're going to talk about heavy duty trucks and should everybody own one? Absolutely not. many of you have been following my channel for a while, you guys know that I am actually a truck driver and I'm also a full-time RVer. But I keep getting asked a question to weigh in on whether I think heavy duty trucks should be for everyone. No, I do not believe that heavy duty trucks should be for everyone out there. There's too many unqualified people just because you can purchasing heavy haul trucks. Just because you can doesn't mean you should. Just because you have the means doesn't make you qualified. All right, so let's get into this subject here. And it's time to be really brutally honest with everybody. Now, guys, I know there's a lot of you out there who watch my channel that have heavy-duty trucks. I'm not saying you're not qualified. That is 100% not what I'm saying. There are some people who own this type of equipment that are 100% qualified. But then again, on the flip side of that, there's always somebody who has the means to buy this set of piece of equipment. They go out and buy it. They have no clue on how to operate that piece of equipment therefore you're not safe you're not qualified to be in that piece of equipment that's just in the story flat out brutal honesty here now heavy duty trucks are cool they pull a lot of weight therefore you know you're always going to be able to pull your rv with it i mean that's not going to be a question unless you're pulling something you know 150,000 pounds you're not really going to have a problem with a traditional heavy haul truck and i know today's market sometimes it's cheaper to get into a heavy haul truck than it is a normal pickup truck nowadays because of the stupid prices we got going on but you also have to take that with a grain of salt if you have no idea of how that piece of equipment works you shouldn't own it you should, damn sure shouldn't operate it now guys i'm not saying just people who buy heavy haul trucks are not qualified and stuff like that now my feelings go back to the whole thing with air brakes in general if you have a piece of equipment with air brakes, you need to have some sort of general knowledge training, some understanding of how the brake system works. I understand before you guys get into the comments, I know they got mechanics for these kind of things to make sure things are operating the way they should. Yeah, I get that. Okay, but here's the cold hard fact about that is that mechanic is not with you. When you inspect that vehicle to make sure it's safe to be on the road. He's not there. You're the one solely responsible to look that piece of equipment over and be able to identify a problem before you take off on your journey. If you can't look down and see the braking system on something with air brakes, that something's not right, then you're not qualified to have that piece of equipment. You damn sure ain't qualified to have that thing on the interstate. You're not qualified to have that thing operating around anyone. Because not only can you kill yourself, you kill somebody else. More than likely, you're going to walk away because you are in this big, heavier piece of equipment. You're going to drive through the other piece of equipment you hit. Therefore, whether it is a heavy haul truck, a Class A diesel pusher, a school bus with air brakes, if you do not have some sort of general knowledge training in that, I personally feel you have no business owning that piece of equipment. And you damn sure have no business operating that piece of equipment. This video, I'm sure, is going to hurt a lot of people's feelings, and that's solely not my intention to hurt your feelings. But cold hard fact says most people don't even understand how the RV's brake system works anyway. They don't understand how their traditional family pickup trucks brake systems work. And that's not a good idea either, especially when you're going to be pulling a piece of equipment down the road, whether it be an RV, a trailer, or anything, or even just a general person driving down the road just have some sort of idea of how to diagnose a problem of their own vehicle before they are going down the road. This is whether you're pulling a trailer or not. This is my personal feelings. But when you come back to heavy duty trucks, which were commercial, guys, people who are commercial drivers, we have a bunch of training to be able to drive that kind of equipment. We have to go through a medical evaluation every two years if you're lucky to get a two year health card that you're okay for two years. 
to be able to operate that piece of equipment. Now, most states don't really have any real rules about anybody owning said piece of equipment. And a lot of states, a teenager with a learner's permit can get in behind the wheel of a Class A diesel pusher and drive it, not having no experience driving a car. But now they're in a vehicle with air brakes. Bad idea. Bad idea. Then we're not even going to mention, well, actually we are going to mention this, piss on it. When you're in a tractor trailer, okay, or a semi-tractor rather, and you're pulling a RV, a fifth wheel, you now you have air over electric. Now, a lot of people don't understand this. When the air brake system, you have a little bit of lag with your brake system anyway when you're running air. You tap the brake, it's a couple seconds before it engages. Now, if you have everything set too sensitive back there on that uh, your fifth wheel back there, you got your brake gain turned up too high, what happens is you get the electric signal back there before your brakes start working in the truck. You know what happens in that situation? You lock your brakes up on your camper. That turns you into a jackknife situation. A lot of people ain't qualified to get a normal pickup truck that gets out of shape like that into a jackknife position to right the truck and straighten the truck up so you don't roll the thing over. Let alone something that's a lot more top heavy than any passenger pickup truck on the market. You're going to flip that thing over. You need to be qualified to own this kind of equipment. That's just the end of the story. I honestly feel that most states, if people who are going to own this kind of equipment, to pull an RV, they should have to be required to have some sort of commercial license. Saying they're qualified or something stating that they went through a general knowledge on air brakes, how the inner workings of that vehicle. That should be for anybody. I mean, for crying out loud, just because you're not pulling commerce, you're driving the same piece of equipment that a person who's pulling a commerce situation has to have all this medical testing, they have to have all these certifications, they have to have a special driver's license to drive this said piece of equipment. But anybody with a learner's permit can just jump in this and drive it because it's not pulling something commercially. Just because you're not pulling groceries to the warehouse or commodities someplace doesn't mean that piece of equipment has changed. It's still the same piece of equipment if I hook that, tra that tractor back up to a camper, I'm not under CDL guidelines or anything else like, like that. But if I hook it to a commerce trailer, now, bam, i got to have a CDL to drive that truck down the road. i got to have some sort of general knowledge and qualifications to even drive that truck. Now, I personally think that that should be the standard for everyone. Now, like I said, this, I'm sure, is probably making a lot of you mad out there right now. But as a truck driver, I don't see the difference. If I have to know this, and anybody else driving a truck in commerce has to know these things, then I think, damn well, you should too. Because it's not about what the states say, it's about safety. If you have no idea how this piece of equipment works, you're not qualified. You don't need to be behind the wheel of this. 100%. You know, I'm not going to blow smoke up your butt and tell you, oh yeah, yeah, that's cool, stay under the sun, go get one. I'm not going to tell you that. If you're not qualified, I don't expect you to run that piece of equipment. Because one, I'm on that interstate with you. My family's on interstate with you. I think you need to be qualified to drive that piece of equipment. Do I think you need to be held to every standard of CDL? No, not exactly. But I think you should have to have some sort of general knowledge before you're allowed to uh, hook up that piece of equipment. Because here's the, here's the final blow of this right here. Now, I'm going on a road in a commercial truck, the same truck you're driving... Uh, they have what's called the Department of Transportation, DOT. They'll pull that truck over. I'm driving and inspect the brake systems. And if something's wrong with it, I'm out of service. And guess what? I got a big fat ticket out of the deal. And it also goes to the fact of, you know, me losing my commercial ability to drive a truck. You could be driving down the road, stuff falling apart on your truck. You're not going to get pulled over and get inspected to make sure that thing's safe to be on the road. That's back to where you need to know it's safe to be on the road. And there's too many people out there who don't even maintain their pickup truck or their RV. Then they want to have an HD truck. Am I the only one seeing a problem with that? I hope not. Because um, there's a lot of drivers out there, retired drivers, that feel the same way I do on this situation. I'm all for people having what they want. Be able to have nice stuff. But at the end of the day, you need to be the safe, responsible person who's able to actually look at this vehicle and see there's a problem before you get on the road with it.
If you can't do that, absolutely not. You do not need to be in a commercial size vehicle pulling your RV. But we'll get into the other aspects of whether having an HD truck is a good idea. Well, any of you guys ever been to some of the resorts, say in Arizona and places like that, uh, a lot of these private RV parks, the nice ones, the ones you want to go to, not the ones where you might get your throat slit in the middle of the damn night, uh, they're very tight. They're cram-packed. And now trying to introduce this big piece of equipment to get articulated, to get into an RV spot that's almost impossible sometimes with your personal everyday run-of-the-mill passenger pickup that everybody can go buy, you can't get into that. And a lot of these RV parks don't even want that type of equipment on their property. One, because it's heavy. It does damage. And then if you have an unqualified person behind the wheel of that, it could cause a lot more damage. It can cause several thousands of dollars of damage of all the shit they ran over trying to get into their site. So, you know, you not just have that situation there with whether you're qualified to understand how that piece of equipment works, but a lot of these RV parks don't want you there anyway. Now, that's a great piece of equipment if you're going to do a lot of boondocking. Well, here's the thing. When you start taking one of these big trucks off the road, I hope you got deep pockets when you get out there and get that thing stuck off the road somewhere. Because you ain't just calling your little tow truck out here to pull you out. No, you're calling a heavy-duty tow truck to come out there. And they charge quite a bit of money to get you out of a place you shouldn't have been with that truck anyway. And that goes back to another thing of not being qualified, not having the experience with that kind of equipment. You're going to take that piece of equipment into some place you never should have had it. Residential areas with low power lines, making turns that you can't quite make, not really paying attention to your mirrors. It's not like you're going to look over your shoulder and look out the back window and make sure things are clear. You actually have to use your mirrors, which you should be using anyway when you're pulling an RV, fifth wheel, any kind of trailer. You're supposed to be using your mirrors, not looking out the windows. But more and more people who drive a pickup truck, they're used to looking over their shoulder to see if they can get around something, especially when you're backing in. Now, here's the other thing. When you go into these RV parks, you're not only going to back your RV into a tight place, you're also going to back into your blind side. Now, when you have a tractor, a semi-heavy-duty tractor, trying to blindside into a place, uh, that's a lot more difficult that you really will have to use your mirrors. And that means you also have to pay attention to this side. It does not cut as sharp as a pickup truck. You're going to run over stuff with this side if you don't back into something because you can't see out the back window. There's a lot of factors and reasons why I believe you should not own a heavy duty truck if you're not qualified now i'm not saying you shouldn't own one if you're not a commercial driver no i'm not saying that i'm saying you need to have some sort of training there should be some sort of courses offered and people should definitely take advantage of getting some training with this type of equipment before you hurt yourself or someone else like i said i'm sure this video has really probably hurt a lot of people's feelings Honestly, that was not my intention to hurt your feelings, but I think it's time that people be brutally honest that not everybody should go out and buy a heavy-duty truck just because you have the means. It's in the story. But if you are going to elect to buy that, please do me a favor and everybody else. Seek out some sort of training. Go to the library, for Christ's sakes. And get a book on air brakes. Understand your braking system on your truck. I was at a place where these people had a Class A motorhome, okay? They were trying to figure out how to put fuel in an extra gas tank they had on their RV. And they happened to ask me if I had any idea how to put extra fuel in this smaller tank they got. I'm like, what, what are you talking about, smaller tank you have? They were literally trying to put fuel in the air tank. The air tank which supplies the air to your braking system of the RV. You kind of see where my thought process is on this not everybody needs to own this kind of a piece of equipment if you're thinking that the air tank reservoir for your brake system is an extra fuel tank you don't need to be driving anything with air brakes another thing people don't understand cold weather driving something with air they get condensation in there what i also likes to do is freeze up your airlines frozen airlines means no air is going through you have no brakes the other thing about that, people don't pay attention. If their buzzer goes out on something with air brakes and they just keep driving, oh, it's just a light on the dashboard. It says something about air, but it says air in the tank. Well, obviously, it's not replenishing that air. So you probably have something wrong with your either your air dryer or your air compressor. Here's the thing, guys. When you drop under a certain amount of 
pounds of air, what happens to that piece of equipment is it automatically engages a spring brake, which is a parking brake. You're going down the interstate, you lose air, you drop down under 60 pounds of air, it locks the brakes. Guess what? Now you're coming to a screeching halt right in the middle of the interstate. If you get lucky to be able to pull off to the side without killing yourself or wrecking your truck because of that, you're going to be very lucky. There's so many factors of why I believe people need to have this training with anything with air brakes. That's why I said do yourself a favor, do everybody else a favor. If you're going to own that piece of equipment, familiarize yourself with the systems. Ask a truck driver to show you how to maintain that piece of equipment, how to visually inspect that piece of equipment. Better yet, the best thing for you to do if you're going to have a heavy-duty piece of equipment or even a Class A motorhome diesel pusher or anything with air brakes, there's a thing called a pre-trip inspection. It's got a list of stuff that you really need to look at before you're driving that piece of equipment. I suggest you do yourself a favor, read that, know it, let it become gospel to you. Each and every time before you even think about taking that piece of equipment. Now, this is everything from checking the lug nuts all the way down to your brake cams, S cams on your truck, brake chambers, linings, drum brakes, disc brakes, whatever. It shows you what to look for and points out what you should be looking at. So, guys, I hope I didn't hurt your feelings too much today on this video of what my thoughts are on people owning HD trucks. I think it's a good idea if you need that type of truck, if you're qualified. But if you're not, I suggest you get qualified. So guys, sorry to come on here and kind of let it out how I feel about it personally and being brutally honest about it. But I think somebody needed to be, especially in today's market, sometimes you can buy the heavy piece of equipment a lot cheaper than your traditional passenger pickup truck. So guys, until next time, we'll see you down the road. Be safe out there. Bye.